you guys will f*** yourselves. Because it goes and then go <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, my name's Mark. I'm the Facilities and Engineering Manager here at Cyberfort. Come follow me for the behind the scenes of what we do. Here we are in one of our UPS rooms. We're currently changing 160 battery cells, which is just over five tons in weight. This is a battery backup system for our customers and clients on site. We're carrying out a string at a time to gain maximum resilience and autonomy on, on the system as we work on it. So the reason why they're wearing arc flash tops is due to the nature of the electricity in these batteries. Um, it's to stop skin burns in case there is an incident or accident that occurs. So that obviously is, is it's 10 cal. So that is a, a, a fire rated top for if there was an arc flash off the batteries. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't and go through to me, it would just stop on that. Here we have our UPS engineers here working hard. They're replacing the batteries. They're currently dating the batteries so we know when they're installed. Here we are with one of our generators. This is one of four on site. Um, we're just going to carry out a monthly generator test to manufacturer's recommendations. So I'm just carrying out a visual check on the generator, looking for any oil leaks, coolant leaks, any debris, anything that's out of the, anything that seems to be abnormal. Just putting on some gloves, ready, getting ready to check the oil. Just carrying out a visual check on this side of the generator for any leaks or debris within the generator itself. Um, looking for any weeps on the engine block or the heads. Uh, the condition of the belts, um, making sure the battery isolates is in the correct position, and we also check the oil to make sure that that's okay. Three generator checks are all good. We'll shut the doors and then we'll start the generator up. I'm going to put my air defenders on because these do get quite loud. As you can see, the generator is running nice and smoothly as it should, and now we're just going to turn them off. So we're going to go ahead on the inside and carry out the fire trace maintenance. So I've already prepped six bottles here. I've got two to finish off, and then we'll, we'll carry on to the data floor, and then we'll install these bottles. What we do with the fire trace bottles, when they're newly installed, we install these extension pieces. So when we install the pressure switches, they don't tangle up the cable inside and carry out a dead short, which also preserves the life of the pressure switch. These don't have to be super tight. So obviously they've got O-rings inside um, to stop any, any Novec gas from leaking. We're gonna go replace the fire trace system with some new bottles, and then we could potentially go have some fun with the old stuff. We're gonna discharge the lines, remove the cylinder, commission the new cylinder into the, into the system, and then repressurize the lines. So as you can see on the new cylinder, we've got these new extension pieces. Uh, so when we unthread the presser switch, it doesn't, doesn't potentially short out the cables, it preserves the life of the pressure switch. As you can see here, we've got two gauges. One's the bottle pressure, and one is the line pressure. We'll drop the line pressure, and you should, should, should see this gauge drop into red. Once it's completely empty, the line is safe to remove. Out with the old and in with the new. So every time we, we commission a new cylinder, we then have to chop back the line and we make off the line because just inside there, there's a flan the pipe is flange. And what we don't want to do is create a, a, uh, an area where the, the, the Novec gas could leak. Chop that down and then we'll do this up and it creates a flange on the pipework. So we'll tighten the line onto the new cylinder. And now we're going to pressurize the pipework. So as you can see, we've got 200 bar in this nitrogen bottle, and we're set to 12 bar on this pressure gauge, which is charge this line. And then we're gonna charge up this fire trace line, which then goes into the racks here in this room. So we'll open the valve slowly, just in case there is a slight leak on this flange, because if there is, it's gonna pop off instantly. As we open it up, you'll see the pressure gauge drop. 
as it's charging the line. It's fully open, it's sat at 10 bar, so just increase it slightly to 12. We then shut off the isolator to the nitrogen tank, turn the bottle off, make everything safe. Then gonna remove this nitrogen line, discharge the, the, the line, because what you don't want to do is leave it pressurized. So that's now that line discharged. And then we'll hook a separate pressure gauge onto the line and then we'll monitor it. So we, we monitor 10 minutes per meter of line and it's roughly eight meters per rack. And then we'll come back in a couple of hours time, make sure the pressure's sat okay. And if it's all okay, we then open up the cylinder and then this bottle is good to go. But we'll show you what uh, the Novate gas can do to the server equipment as when it suppresses the fire itself, it doesn't actually affect the, the computer equipment. So here we go. And if you'd like to just... Right. As you can see, the computer is all operational. Quite happy. So Novec is a chemically alert chemical. So obviously when it hits the laptop, it then removes oxygen from the fire triangle and then depletes the fire. It's non-conductive when it's in liquid form. Right. Uh, so that's why it doesn't short out anything in the, in the computer. And this is just a mini version of what we got on the data floor. Here we are setting up a test rig to blow stuff up. So we're just rigging up a test rig. Um, this is a mini replica of what it would be like inside the server, inside the, the racks itself. Put an open flame to the bottom, and then it shows you how it discharged the fire. Um, with this fire trace system, we can get the system back up in live within about 15 minutes. We can cut out the, the burst pipe, reinstate the pipe work that's damaged, and then change over the cylinder for a new cylinder. And then, yeah, back up and live in 15 minutes. I can't tell you how we got here for security reasons, but here we are in one of our LV plant rooms. This is one of our LV panels in our plant rooms. We're gonna take the meter readings straight from the source itself. Um, I'm gonna input it into my computer. Um, this is gonna calculate our building load versus our IT load and calculate our power usage efficiency. And currently on this site, we operate about 1.36. So that's pretty good between building load and computer load. Here we are at another switch panel. Um, I'm currently taking readings from the meter itself. Um, this gives us our on-demand current. And then we uh, go on our BMS system and get the maximum demand current. We input our figures onto a spreadsheet and then it calculates our PUE. So that's what we've been up to today on our day-to-day -day basis here at Solfort. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.